Welcome, my friends. This is Maniacal Incorporated. We have created the Kingdom of Ireland. We have restored the Druids to power. And today, we will create a mighty Druid army that will protect our kingdom and religion because there are a lot of enemies surrounding us. And I am a bit fearful of somebody maybe attempting to declare a crusade against us to restore Christianity. So we are going to enact the Defenders of Danu decision, which will allow us to build the Hall of Heroes at a holy site, and I want that holy site to be Ushnuk in Meath. The problem is we have an alliance with them at the moment. However, the High King, Ku Kongelt, is advanced in years, as is a Finlia, so I don't think that alliance is going to last much longer, and when it falls, we will attack Meath, we will take personal possession of it, and we will build a holy site there. We have a couple of things that we need to do. We need to have four powerful vassals with over 60 opinion. That shouldn't be the worst. Now we're going to start with a bit of a raid. We're going to raid into Urvuen. And then we're going to head for Scotland and try and put some money and prestige together. We actually have a lot of prestige. So hopefully, the High King will live out a couple of more years and allow us to declare a few wars. We've wandered into the middle of a war. We don't care, we're just going to raid down as much as we can. Our army is returned from Scotland with a good chunk of money. There's a lot of wars going on in the region, so it was quite... Uh, difficult to figure out where we could not couldn't go. We're now raiding down Argyla. They've just been hit by Meath, so they're not getting out with any money. And we have a Dynasty Lifestyle Perk. And Whale Owen, Mock Angus, is our new player heir. Hmm. For the Dynasty Lifestyle Perk, it's going to be easy enough. We're going to go for House of Warriors, plus two prowess and knight effectiveness, because there's going to be a lot of wars, I have a feeling. So we're currently supporting our son Krahur for the High Kingship. Does not look like that's going to succeed, so we're going to switch to supporting Angus. Because we'd much rather him in power than his five-year-old son. Now that we've gotten some money together, it's time to go back to war. Like I said, there's going to be a lot of wars on this episode. So we are going to take Tyr Cunnel. We had an arrangement with them. A matrilineal marriage, they can get a good chunk of troops together from Meath, who are also our allies, so I'd be hoping that we could get in there before... Who would we hit first of all? We could hit Meath. Our wife, Bardov, has passed away, which loses us stress, because we hated her. Meath has indeed entered the war, and it's pretty much coming for the position that we're in. They turned around, that's a pity we would have had a good advantage against them. I'd say we'd have to go and chase them down. They actually have an advantage over us. It's turning on a knife edge. We're lucky that we managed to get them when uh, before they came in and assisted um, Tyr Owen. My court druid is scheming against my courtier. We're going to throw him in jail. Are we going to throw him in jail? It's 100... Oh no, he'll lose 150. Uh, yeah, we're going to throw him in jail. This was actually a pretty close battle. Sean the poor useless devil died in prison and it's a good thing he had four learning and he has been replaced by Kathleen who has 15 and I think she's knocked about 10 years off of the length of time it's going to take to convert uh, one of the counties. He was a terrible court druid. Now bless them, they're coming back again. We have an advantage because of the, the area that we're in, their knights were doing better. One of our knights has been strangled. I don't know if it's a great idea to stay in this position and keep uh, having their armies coming in against us. So we have abandoned the area, the way that we can regroup some knights. We've managed to hit Tyr Connell's army. Meath is coming for us. We're going to see what type of prisoners we have. And if there's anybody that we could get to join the army. We have recruited a grand total of two captured knights. Uh, they're defending in hills. They have a better advantage. We'll send the army in anyway and we'll see how it goes. I'm a prisoner in my own body. We've gained the trait in firm.
and we have captured A himself. We're defending in a better area, but Tyrone, Tyrone comes in a bit too late, I think, to actually materially affect this battle. And all of the forces are being driven back. We're told that we are close to the end of our life. Kukangelt is dying. Kukangelt will die within the next year. Hopefully we'll be in a, a position to bring this battle to an end by then. Me, this coming in again. They're making another attempt. Hopefully we can get this done, thankfully. Lads, look at this for a prison. I would like to ransom out A, but we lose a ton of war score and we'll have to continue fighting if we do that. So I'm just going to bring this to an end. We will enforce our demands. We're over our cap, so I'm going to start handing out land because I don't want our son Krahur to be too powerful when Angus succeeds. So we're going to give Tyr Connell to Oswald. So if he becomes a powerful vassal, he has some good traits. So we're going to give him Tyr Connell. We're able to release some prisoners, A. Eh? We can't convert him, so we're going to get 70 gold. Here is Lasarina of the Dalgash, her father Lorcan, uh, refused to convert to Druidism. I think her husband was actually killed in the, uh, the war that just went on. Sorry about that. So what we're going to do is we're going to be able to demand her conversion. She's the heir to the Dalgash at the moment. We could recruit her. But I think we'll just negotiate her release and get her to convert to Druidism. So if she does succeed her father, then we will have another Druidic vassal. Well, we almost split the country in two if it wasn't for Urvuen. I don't know is there much of a point in doing much else at this stage. I think we'll have to hold off on that war against the Isles until Angus takes over. And here's somebody who's made a very bad choice. They've come to seduce a dying man. How sweet, but no. And you know what? Before he shuffles off this mortal coil, we might as well have him hold court for the first and only time. Our new vassal, Oswald, who was a prisoner that we forced to convert to Druidism, is demanding that Lorcan convert. Danu made her demands on us plain. Era should be a land of the faithful. Out with these insular dogs. I think considering the High King is dying, he can be a bit forceful and we're going to say you are right. Chieftain Lorcan must convert. Our son Krahur has been digging up bodies. Fresh living bodies make for better test subjects. That'd be fantastic. It's going to give us a reduction in court grandeur, quite sizable one. So I think we're just going to tell Krahur to just stop it. And a crazed mystic shows up screaming that the end is nigh. Do you know what? It, it really is nigh and we must uh, do everything we can to secure salvation. So we're not going to be able to do much more with our prestige before we die so we can help Angus a bit. We're going to expand the size of the army. We're going to increase our light footmen by one. We will increase the bowmen by one and we will create a regiment of armored footmen. So that's going to be quite expensive and it knocks off a, a chunk of prestige but like I said we're not really in a position to do much more at the moment. Kukongelt is on his knees begging you please if you're enjoying this video leave a like Drop a comment praising the brilliance of the algorithm, and if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. You have died. High King Kukongelt of Era has been ritually decapitated and thrown into a peat bog at 70 years of age. So there are specialized death descriptions for druids. That's kind of cool. He died of old age. A hollowed shell of his former self. He had long lost his wits by the time of his final passing. High King Angus ascends to the throne, fair and just in all things, many hope that he will handle any conflicts with grace.
So let's see what uh, what way things have gone. We have inherited the Kingdom of Ireland and the High Chiefdom of Munster, and we only have one county to our name. There is High Chieftain Crahur of Connacht. He has Desvuin, uh, Loch Lane, and Evonia. That's most of the territory of Munster, and then... Uh, his brother has gotten two other counties. We will continue as High King Angus. Now, the new High King is in a fairly awkward position in terms of his military. Uh, 1,300, half of what the previous ruler had. The first thing we're going to sort out is some marriages. So, here is a marriage into... Somewhere in England. 700 troops, it's not great. And that, of course, will be a betrothal. And another betrothal that we will organize, and somebody who will possibly make our primary wife, is Etna Nick Crahur. So this is Crahur, the king of Munster and... No, he's the king of Connacht. His daughter and his successor. So she's going to inherit, unless he has a son at some stage, she's going to inherit Connacht, Loch Lane, and Evonia. The new High King is a fighting man. We're going to give him the chivalry focus. And we're going to put him down the gallantry. Our council is completely depleted. And again, we need to have four strong vassals in these positions. I'm not too sure we even have four strong vassals. Uh, we might be lucky. So I think we can put Oswald in as our marshal. The other problem is we need to have them at plus 60 opinion. So we are indeed short a vassal. We have three powerful vassals. Oswald I've put in as our marshal. Lorcan I've put in as our chancellor. He's a bit angry at the moment because we forced him to convert to druidism. Krahur. I'm going to put him in as our steward when he gets back to us about that proposal that we made to marry his daughter. I think it might have been a better idea to have organized that alliance between his daughter and one of our sons, but you know what? Doesn't make a difference. And Muildoon, I'm actually going to conquer some land. He's the best spy master that we have. I'm going to conquer some land and give it to him. Now we have a ton of money to our name, but I have no idea what we did to get minus 220 prestige. So that's going to be a big problem until we can get rid of that. We are going to call a hunt. As we are out hunting, we see a white fox like something from a tail. I must have it. We have lost the white fox. Now we could become obsessed with it. I will not know rest until I find it. But what we're going to do instead is to say that we scouted ahead so we gain 10 opinion with all participants in the hunt. Because there's a lot of people who hate us at the moment. Including our new player, Air. So we gain 150 prestige and we're still in a prestige deficit. My lord, my beneficiary, Christina, waves me over to a covered armor stand. It is magnificent, the Onacht Rathland Mail. Prowess plus three friendly casualties, minus four percent. It is magnificent. And you know what? As we don this armor, that gives me an idea as to how we could possibly get some more prestige. Raise the armies as raiders. Up into down we go, and over to Antrim. We've 1,600 troops. Uh, the region we're raiding has 1,300. Arguilla is actually raidable again. If we get prestige, we're going to take it. Uh, we add 30 loot and 75 prestige. Absolutely, so that takes us out of that deficit. We're not actually in a position to siege down Arguilla, so we will return home for a moment and we'll probably head back. What bad timing. Scotland is in flames. Most of the powers in this region are a bit too strong for us, so we're going to begin to withdraw. We have, however, gotten enough prestige and money together that will allow us to declare war on Urvuen. And we will take it and keep it as our own possession, because we don't have a lot of land. 
It was an easy enough battle. We've taken a couple of people hostage. I'm going to check if there's anybody there that is suitable to be recruited as a knight. Hopefully we can finish this off quickly enough. Like I said, it'll give us some land in a province that is bereft of land due to the fact that most of it belongs to the ruler of Connacht. Urvun has come back in at us again, and if I am correct, yeah, Meath has started to siege down to your Connell. They actually have a much larger army than we have. For now... Meath made a bad mistake of moving north into the northern parts of Tyr Connell. And with any luck, I don't think so. I don't think we're going to be able to hit them. Okay, they've made an even worse mistake. So they just left us enough time to recover our numbers. And what we can now do is basically cross straight across the border. We will, of course, switch out our commander for the man himself. We go across the border into Tier Owen. And we can't raid them because of those invisible flags in the background that I keep forgetting about. We are in a bit of a problem with Meath at the moment. They have an alliance of six and a half thousand. Here is his heir who has no alliances, so if a was to die, that would be very beneficial to us. What we're going to do is continue our conquests. He won't accept vassalization. Before I took over with Angus, he was swaying Gilcomon. I have no idea who this man is. We have just told him that we were impressed by his dedication to Danu, we are going to start swaying somebody else. Who are we going to sway? Lorcan. We seem to be sw uh, losing standing with him very quickly. So do you know what? We will sway Oswald, because I don't think we'll have as much work to do. We have conquered Arguilla. We will enforce our demands. So be it. And I'm going to hold on to Arguilla for a while because there's not a lot we can do at the moment. Uh, Meath have absolutely massive alliances, including the guys who control Down and Antrim. So we can't go to war with either of them without them bringing in absolutely massive numbers. So for now, we're going to hold back. We're going to hold Arguilla and benefit from it. We might do a couple of raids. But one thing that we are going to do is host a feast. Disaster strikes. When doesn't it? We spend 50 quid to fight thirst. Oswald is boring the living daylights out of us talking about lawmaking. But we're going to tell him um, to talk about himself instead. And we'll gain some opinion with him. And the feast ends. We gain some piety. Our prestige, enough to take us out of that prestige deficit that we have found ourselves in. And everyone gains 20 opinion of us. We have the money, but piety is getting a bit low, so what we're going to do is we are going to undertake a pilgrimage. And we could go to Sligo, which we control. Instead, we are going to go to Ushnuk. As I prepare for the journey, I know that I will travel safely under the protection of the Thuadei. It's time to depart. We're literally going from here to here. We have become lost, or we've lost our companion, so what we're going to do is we're going to hire some foreign guards in Meath. At last, I have finally arrived in Knuk Ushnuk. While some worship in churches or mosques, I know the most sacred of places are in the open forest where a big heap of stones have been put, or maybe where a tree looks weird. The old groves here are especially venerable, and I find myself wondering about my place in the natural world as I stand amongst the great trees. I have walked the holy path, so we gain 250 piety. And we make an attempt to understand the Holy Teachers. 64% chance that we become a wise man. And we do indeed. So that's going to be useful, I would hope, in uh, keeping that piety figure up.
things aren't looking good for anybody who'd be interested in doing a raid, I think we should be able to take on uh, Meath. So we'll be able to raid into Meath and into bits of this region. Scotland is looking quite strong. Meath rose up its army and then decided, you know what? Nah. Tis, tis grand. Tis grand out. We have a son, Meath. We have a few troops too few to take on uh, the Isles. And look at this. A has drank himself to death on the news that the High King Angus rose his armies and has marched on his territory. We're going to bring our raiding to an end very quickly as the heirs keep flipping back and forth between Moelpol and his brother Krahur. We're going to bring our raid to an early end. We're going to return home and we're going to see what the new political situation will allow us to do. And we are indeed in a position. Meath is weak enough. It has formed no alliances that we can declare war for the county of Meath for 38 prestige. We will raise our forces in Brefni. We will put them under the command of the High King himself and we will march straight on Meath, which isn't even the capital. Our son Constantine has learned Brythonic. Uh, we have won the siege of Meath, so we can lift the siege of Argyla. Our councillor Krahur has died. Died in his sleep. An alliance has been formed with our wife. The great thing is that our wife is a much better steward than her father was, so she's able to take his position. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace our spymaster, Moel Duin, with Cormac Mac Quillanon of the Onacht Cashel, somebody that we captured. Uh, he doesn't like me. We'll assign him. We'll assign him and we'll probably... We might uh, send him a gift. Of 12 quid. We're going to begin swaying him as well. And I'm going to grant him, once we have conquered Meath, I'm going to grant him Arguilla. Meath withdraws its forces. It managed to get out in time. It hasn't gotten out of Tyrone in time, however. And are we in a position to begin sieging down? We are. Uh, we have some raiders. We also have the finer points of diplomacy. Moel Owen, leave him as forgiving. Sure. I was going to say there is not a lot we can do about that siege in Ethiocruc, but with our forces going out to fight them, it looks like they're actually going to defeat them. But I was bringing the army out just in case uh, they were defeated... And in case our allies were defeated, but these guys were delayed from uh, from raiding down, is that what's actually happened? It is. I thought they won. Okay, I've gotten myself confused. We're going to try and send in this army and see if we can hit them. Uh, I don't think we'll be able to. Now, we have brought the other battle to an end, which is the most important thing. It was looking bad there for a moment, but we've managed to turn the battle by killing one of their commanders. We have taken their loot. Uh, that army was commanded by the High King himself, so that was a bit of a risky decision. Uh, let's just take a quick look at our prisoners. A. He's the heir to the Earldom of Tyr Owen. Well, he was once upon a time. Oh no, he still is, actually. We will negotiate his release. Can we demand his conversion? We can. The Babby has converted, and we will enforce our demands. Ormuk, bless him, really does not like us. We are going to grant him Arguilla. Maybe this will maybe this will make him stop. So we now have our four powerful vassals in place. We just need to get all of them up to a plus 60 opinion. Which, do you know what? That could actually be tricky because these people really do hate us for forcing their conversion. 
one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to have Lorcan switch from foreign affairs to domestic affairs so that he can convince himself and everyone else that we're actually great. So it looks like most of the vassals are supporting Moel Pole for the High Kingship. Uh, we're not supporting anyone at the moment. An interesting character would be our wife. So we're going to cast a vote for her, but it does absolutely no good. Nobody, Nobody's too pushed about having her as the new High Queen of Ireland. There's also a succession to the chiefdom of Munster, and there again, it looks predominantly like Moel Pole. And there's our son, Moel Owen. So it's unlikely that we'd be able to get Moel Owen elected to the High Kingship. Uh, I think, yeah, we might we might support Moel Pole for this, because I think Moel Pole will become the High King anyway. At the moment, that's the way it's looking. We're in a position to unlock a new lifestyle perk. We're going to go for Never Back Down. And the other thing that we need to take into consideration to get this decision, we need to have Level of Devotion, Devoted Servant, and we need to have four powerful vassals with 60 opinion or greater. I think we should be a-okay there. We're not too far off of Devoted Servant. We're only getting one per month, however. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch to the learning lifestyle. We're going to go for theology focus. And I'm not too sure which uh, which one of these we're going to go down. We could go for whole of body. Another thing that we're going to do, it's taking another three years to convert the province of Desvuen, which we don't even control anymore. So I'm actually going to have our court druidess switch to uh, religious relations which will give us an extra chunk of piety and you know what while we're waiting we as might as well go on another hunt here's our son constantine i'd rather if he didn't pick up the craven trait do you know what i think paranoid considering that he is being raised as on the Intrigue Education, I think Paranoid might be a good idea. And for some strange reason, we are raising him. I know it gives us control over his education, but we don't exactly have uh, the best traits to be passing on. It wasn't the greatest of hunts. We met a big man who claimed that the marshes were his. So we had him show us around and we get 150 prestige. We have swayed Chieftain Cormac, our spymaster, up to the highest number it is possible to get to. So we are going to switch, I think, to Lorcan. We're going to begin swaying Lorcan. And hopefully, Lorcan's domestic affairs will actually have increased our standing with the High Queen and with Oswald by the time that he hits the, uh, the max number, which is that number there. The rings of the power of the lore of the druids. The court druidess has been quoting some passages of lore about the druids. And we should quote one back as she is just... I'm going to go for fairness. Uh, unfortunately, the court druidess is rather conservative. What are you talking about? She sneers. Those are not the words of Danu. Oh, and we've lost some piety. I should have watched the series a bit better. So she wasn't impressed by our lack of knowledge of druid lore. Now she's flirting with us. You flatter me, my lady. And her husband is quite upset that we have given the position of court tutor to Aveen. Uh, we could give him court jester. Cupbearer, he doesn't really like us. I think we'll tell him to just come off it. If you paid more attention to your wife than the jobs people at court are getting, maybe she wouldn't be flirting with me. Well, this is a bit problematic. I was just checking out my fantastic knights and how well they're being trained, and we've been told that we have inherited our gulla from Cormac McCullinon. Because he has died. Damn it, Cormac.
If I am correct, that was of course the famous Cormac MacQuillanon, who would rule as King of Munster. But here he was briefly the ruler of Arguilla. So we can see we have a bit of work to do with Lorcan to, to get him up to the plus 60. We have a bit of work to do, not much, with uh, Oswald. He's nearly there. The High Queen has reached the highest number that it's possible to reach. And so who do we make the ruler of Arguilla now? We could give it to our champion, Aelin, unmarried, already likes us. I think I was going to click assign, so, and he's a fairly good, a fairly good spy master. So I think we will grant the title of Arguilla. And he's just three points off of the max. Our son Muel Owen comes of age. He was educated as a mastermind druid. He's not too shabby at all. A pity we can't appoint him to the position. And we'll see if we can form any alliances. All of the alliances that we can form are quite peculiar. Iceland, you say? We could marry him to a 41-year-old in Iceland. So here is a 13-year-old chieftess way out in Norway. We'll send this proposal. And if I am correct, once she comes of age, he will leave our court. It will, however, bring in about 1,300 troops, 1,400 troops, because we have a bit of a problem at the moment. We're betrothed to this girl. Her father has died, her brother is the new ruler, and until that marriage goes ahead, we can't negotiate an alliance with him. He has 1,600 troops, so I think we actually have no alliances at the moment. Things were looking good there for, for a while. We've hit 54 years of age. Our health is poor. We are ailing. So we don't have the piety to hit Devoted Servant, and we don't have the approval of our council. Our druidess is still trying to seduce us. Uh, we could ask for a rare orchid. Ten per month and plus one learning. Do you know what? Sure. Yeah, bring me a rare orchid. She refused. My wife has been hosting Lorcan for the last couple of weeks, and... She has convinced him, or no, he has convinced her that I'm not the worst. I'm not the worst husband, so that has increased her opinion by 30. We have done our calculations on the age of the world, and we've realized that it's only a century away. Our lover slash florist, terrible florist because she doesn't bring us flowers, has said, maybe we should rethink this. A reasonable point. We lose some prestige, but we will gain 250 piety. And we are now known for our dedication to faith. We are a devoted servant of Danu. I've no idea what's going on here, but I'm sure it's fine. We have managed to sway Lorcan. He's up to 52. He's up to 52. Now, I was just about to start throwing money at him. But why throw money at him when we could throw a cat at him instead? I never thought the day would come when I would click on anything other than I'd love a feline companion. But what we can tell him instead is why don't you take the cat since you were the one who found it and it will gain us 30 opinion with him. Three of our vassals, three of our powerful vassals are at over 60 opinion. And so Oswald, Oswald we will send you a gift, we will give you whatever you want. We'll give you a cat if you want it. And finally, we are lacking alliances. Our enemies still surround us. There are those who would see Christianity forced upon us again. But we will fortify the holy site of Ushnach with a hall of heroes. We've gotten everything together. The four powerful vassals with 60 opinion. We're up to devoted servant. And we control, directly control, a holy site. Fortify the holy site. Under my leadership, the clans have united to raise a great war hall in Knuck Ushnuk. 
within its thick stone walls, we prepare for war. For generations, foreign scavengers have had their eyes on our lands. Let them come, I say. Let them test their might against our brave Gaelic heroes. Let their blood soak into the earth and colour the rivers red. So we have... Gotten... We've gotten a ton of traits. Look at this. Holy Warrior. Faith Hostility Advantage plus 10. Fantastic. Now that happens for a number of our troops from what I know. So we will we'll click on this for a second. And uh, we've gained the trait Holy Warrior. And we're also Defender of the Faith. So plus 1 prowess. And uh, plus 10, same faith opinion. And many Gaelic Warriors in your realm will become Holy Warriors. And of course we get the nickname, the Defender of Danu. I actually haven't had a great amount of success in converting my champions to Druidism, but here is one man. Do you know what? He was one of the hardest to convert to Druidism. Now look at him. He's a Holy Warrior and he has a cat. That's what Druidism brings to you. Would you, would you be a Holy Warrior with a cat if you were a Catholic? Or an insularist? Now, tell me that. And where else would our holy warriors and their cats go, other than the Hall of Heroes? A grand hall where heroic warriors can meet and organize. Uh, levies plus 150, garrison plus 75. And the holder of this holding gets prowess of plus one, and extra piety per knight. And knight effectiveness, so that's fantastic, and to bring that up then to level two... 245, we might get some more money together before we do that, but we're going to do that quite shortly. You can see up there in the corner that the Hall of Heroes has given us a 3,000 strong druid army that will defend the Kingdom of Ireland and expand its borders. Our next major task is going to be reforming the Gaelic faith. We need at least one more holy site, and we need a lot more piety than we have at the moment, so it's a good thing that we're getting extra piety from our knights. And we have a couple of different options. Uh, Mandead, the dev of the mod, commented on them in uh, on the last video. Megalithic Constructions is one I like the look of. Uh, get advantage in hills and extra bonuses in hills. Ritual Fratricide is an interesting one. Makes the following traits virtues. Murderer, Dynastic Kinslayer, Familial Kinslayer and Kinslayer. Uh, you gain Piety and Extra Opinion. But the one that I'm definitely going to be going for, Sanctioned Witchcraft. Rulers may decide to embrace witchcraft, becoming a witch, and allowing them to interact with forces unknown. We will, like I said, need at least another Holy Sight. And a lot more piety before we are in a position to do that. And I hope that you will join me in the next episode so that we may commune with these unknown forces.